Hello YouTube, it's been a little while but we're back with the FTSE's handbook. So you've gone through all the major articles and we're going through some of the supplementary uh, articles. And this one is focusing on fireballs. And this is one I love because I can talk a little bit about when I was learning Street Fighter. And it was a concept I took forever to kind of grasp because of the way I learned Street Fighter. Anyway, let's just, let's just get into it. Okay, so make no mistake about it. Mid-range projectiles are absolutely a major facet of footsies. In fact, their uses are so diverse and their impact so significant that it's impossible to cover everything in one article. I'll attempt to provide a conceptual introduction instead. Thank you. Practically speaking, a fireball is a relatively slow poke with good range. Ideally, you want to rely on attacks with roughly 4 to, fra four to 5 frames of startup which recover quickly. By contrast, projectiles specials typically have over 10 frames of startup followed by lengthy recovery periods. Yep, something I'm sure we all know. To compensate, projectile possess one exceptional property. Their active hitbox is invincible. With physical attacks, effective range and vulnerable range are approximately equal. Even if you have a full screen normal like Dalsum Stan Heavy Punch, whiffing it in front of Dan still gives him an opportunity to retaliate. This is someone thing I want to talk about in detail in a second. Furthermore, Dan's invincible or Yukin will counter Dalsum Stan Heavy Punch from any spot inside its range. These basic principles form the foundation of footsies. So pretty much, right, if Dalsum sticks his giant hands at you full screen and you threw a fireball your fireball will win right even everywhere people assume dalsum kind of outranges them um he can never go through your fireball is invincible pretty simple idea right so the rules of engagement change when dealing with fireballs counteracting the opponent's attack is no longer enough to hurt them because the projectiles are independent entities thus your table of counters shifts dramatically most importantly, you lose the option to retaliate after standing back because projectiles will continue advancing forward until they make contact, at which point you'll become pushed out of range. In fact, the longer a projectile travels before connecting, the more frame advantage it creates for its owner. Yeah, so let's look at that quickly, right? So Ryu's gonna throw a fireball here. Let him do that. If I block it right here, I'm plus one, right? But if I'm to block it back here, now he's plus 27, right? Because he recovered so long that the projectile um, recovery ended, but I still blocked it. So the, essentially what the article is talking about, what I really want to emphasize here is that reuse Hadouken, you can treat it almost like a Dalsim limb where it's like reaching very long, right? If Ryu throws his, if Ryu does this at this point in the stage, right? Let's say he does this. He wants to, he wants to poke me, right? What's the risk of that? Well, if I'm waiting, Okay, right. he wants to poke me. What's the risk? He can whiff it and I can whiff punish it, right? There, there's a clear risk to pressing that button. Doesn't mean you should never press it, obviously. But there's a risk behind that at this range. I can sweep counter poke it. But what if he does this instead? He's covering... He's playing footsies at a similar range. I can never whiff punish this, right? I cannot move back and punish it. Obviously, Kami specifically can do this on, on reaction. But... Essentially what we're trying to get at here, okay, is that if you you have to try to if you're playing a fireball character Treat fireballs less as like a projectile that you're gonna throw out full screen and sometimes you need to think of it as One of your best pokes, right? Ryu doesn't have a normal that reaches this far like Dalsim does, but he has a fireball. You can treat it that way Obviously the risk here is that Kami can jump over it, right? I mean, Kami specifically can do this, but characters in general can jump over. But that doesn't mean you should never do it. This is kind of what I wanted to talk quickly about. When I first learned Street Fighter, I was learning in 2009, 09, in Street Fighter 4. I remember watching this video. With At the time, I thought it was like so good at like teaching me the game very quick. It, taught, it like split up the screen into five ranges, right? Where they drew lines on training mode where this is range one. It's kind of like the scramble, your kind of tech throw situations. You're pressing your jabs, your lights, whatever. This was range two where you're playing like footsies, right? You want them to whiff a button. You want to walk up, walk back, whatever. This is a lot of the things we talked about in this uh, series. And then this was range three where like characters can no longer hit each other with normal. So it's a lot more about walking forward or back. A lot of people will jump at this range. And in that video, I remember the guy said particularly, try not to throw fireballs at range three. And that's something that stuck with me for a long time. And I think it hindered my gameplay, even though the rest of the video, I thought the idea, the, con the concepts were good. I think just thinking about this hindered my gameplay because you should throw fireballs at this range, okay? Because yes, it's risky. People can jump over them, but you have to use it just like we talked about in a million different things in this whole series that just because something has a counter doesn't mean you never use it. Just using it once or twice now makes the person want to counter, right? If Ryu throws a single fireball here that I wasn't ready for, 
Now I want to jump at him because I think he'll do it again. And then I get DP'd. He doesn't throw it. Now he's waiting. Now he starts walking more and he just gives up space. Or I'm waiting, I'm, I'm waiting for him to throw a fireball. So I'm backing off a bit to give him some space so I could bait him. He's just walking me to the corner now, right? By treating this range as, as like a poke for your fireball, you're essentially turning your character into Dalsim in a way, right? So let's go to here. So by Dalsim pressing stand heavy punch here, he's taking essentially the same risk. Okay, the total of his stand heavy punch was 46 frames. I don't remember what Ryu's fireball was. It was probably close. We'll switch back. But it's this exact same idea where if I jump when Dalsim does this, He's getting punished, but that doesn't mean you'll fight a Dalsim who won't use this poke, right? So why should Ryu, why should Ken, why should Luke not use their fireball as a poke from a similar range? You're, you're kind of giving up a lot of threat in neutral by being scared to throw fireballs at this range. And I know a lot of people are. Now, like everything in this whole series, I'm not telling you to just go to this range and throw fireballs. You're going to get jumped in on. You're going to get drive impacted. You're going to get Kami spin knuckled, right? But I'm saying think of it sometimes as a poke that you can use and what does that mean to your opponent if they block it once they might want to jump over it next time they might want to spin knuckle as cami they might walk back to bait you and then you just walk forward instead of doing another fireball right you use essentially your best poke you, you, you've changed footsies now right even doing it closer like this dalsim will never press this at this range there's just no point but ryu can throw a fireball at that range even though none of his other pokes reach me right he's not going to sweep me at that range and that's good because it's like he's now changing the the distance where I'm comfortable standing. If I'm standing out here against Ryu forever because I just I'm just baiting him with your crouch mini kick, with your crouch mini kick, I do this, and he throws a fireball at me, I no longer feel kind of safe dancing in this in this zone, right? So yeah, I kind of talked about this for a little longer than I wanted, but I really hope that uh it kind of changes the way you think about fireballs in that it's not just a zoning or like a full screen uh, projectile, right? I mean it is, but you can very much use it as your best poke, right? A lot of characters do not have a poke that reaches this far as Kami. If you have a fireball, you do, right? I mean, yeah, Kami's is 34 frames. That's faster than most fireballs. But just because yours is a bit slower doesn't mean you should never use it, right? Kami's doesn't reach from here. A fireball does. If Kami had a fireball, you would be so scared to stand at this range against her because then she could do this, she could do this, whatever. But because she doesn't, a lot of people do like standing at this range. They want to wait for her to whiff this. They want to wait for her to start a dive kick and they kind of react to it, right? Anyway, let's continue. Projectiles can be util utilized as pokes. Pretty much just what we talked about. We'll watch the video here, but it's like 140p. But yeah, like you can barely tell what's going on, but watch the guile here. He's using the sonic boom at this range a lot, even though Dalsim's supposed to outrange him. Dalsim cannot poke through this, right? So watch, watch. Does it, he moves forward, sonic boom. That three range that I was talking about earlier, sonic boom again moves back now he's using it as a normal projectile but it like he's mixing it up right by using it as essentially a poke right there it got punished that time sure dalsim slid under that doesn't mean you don't use it right uh i've talked about this before people say don't jump in street fighter it's risky it is risky but you should use it people say don't mash on defense it's risky it is risky but you should mash on defense some people tell you don't throw fireballs at ranges where people will just jump over them it is risky but you should do it and i hope you get why i keep saying things like that uh these kind of rules that people will tell you don't do certain things at certain moments in the game even though there's usually good merit and you shouldn't overuse it you have to get used to using it or else your neutral is just so much less threatening right if i'm playing against a ryu who will not use his fireball as a poke i am so comfortable as cami standing here and just walking like this if he jumps i dp if he sets out um he sets out a normal i'll try to whiff punish it. if he does nothing i start walking to the corner cami's really like scary when she's in your face if he's like super hesitant i can even just dive kick for free and i messed it up uh, I haven't played in a few weeks. Sorry about the lack of videos. Anyway, let's go continue. Uh, fireballs can apply pressure, beat out mistimed normal attacks, repel aggressive opponents, and punish mistakes. There's no unwritten law restricting pokes to normal moves. I agree. This is beautiful. Some fireballs even knock down, which makes them viable as mid-screen counter pokes. I'm guessing he's going to whiff punish with a fireball. That's kind of that's probably pretty hard, but good idea. Yeah, so you see how it traded there, but he got a knockdown, right? So look, right here, this is like Ryu's red fireball. It, it, he, I don't, I don't really know if that was like a purpose whiff punish, but it's such a good trade because this red fireball knocks down. Ryu walks up, he gets pressure. Oh, and he jumped up. Yeah. 
Even if they carry frame and disadvantage when blocked, most opponents are rendered incapable of retaliation after getting pushed so far back forward, right? Like we showed with the Ryu one. Uh, when I blocked it at that kind of footsies range, I was minus one, but there's no way anyone will ever punish that, right? So two direct universal methods of dealing with projectiles are jumping over them and stuffing them during startup. Jumping is always risky, but the reward is high provided you land a damaging combo. Using a quick poke to prevent the fireball from coming out involves less commitment. However, it does require you to stay within close proximity, which is a challenge against fireball characters. It's always wise to build meter as you work to close the gap, because even the threat of a super move can be enough to discourage opponents from throwing fireballs, tipping the matchup in your favor. This is a huge deal for Kami and Street Fighter VI. I'm sure other characters have similar like chun Li Super 2. All right, so now that Balrog has a super, it's a little scarier for Sagat to throw his fireball. And he just stopped throwing it, honestly. I don't, I don't know if uh, Balrog was going to super through it. He didn't. But Sagat stopped throwing his fireball because of that threat. The entire strategic landscape of Street Fighter changes dramatically once you begin thinking of projectiles as components of footsies. Yeah, so this is exactly what I was trying to get at. Don't think of projectiles, especially if you are a projectile character, but also when you're fighting one, you have to realize sometimes that you just have to block it, right? You have to block, you have to walk them to the corner because you don't want to risk the jump. Sometimes you do jump, right? Again, I don't want to go into this spiral. Sometimes you do things that are bad, but whatever. The entire strategic landscape of Street Fighter changes dramatically once you begin thinking projectiles as components of footsies. Fireballs. <clears throat> Fireballs are what transform Shotos from mediocre poking characters into mid-range powerhouses. I agree. The difference between a beginner and an expert player is immediately apparent from how well they apply fireballs and footsies. Yeah, so again, I agree with all this. Um, I don't want to spend too much time here as I think the lesson here uh, is a little more obvious than some of the other ones. But just think of it as simple as this as if you're a character who uses fireballs how bad is ryu from this range pretty bad i can't hit you with this i'll never use my sweep from here because you block it it's minus a thousand i can't use this i mean okay you can't use that one so we'll move back a little bit right but when you fight a ryu who's willing to fireball you from right here look at that from this range why would you throw a fireball if i jump over it you're doomed but when you play a Ryu who is willing to do it and then he stops all of a sudden, you can't jump on him. You feel like you can't walk forward because you don't want to walk in the fireball. You feel like you can't jump because he stopped throwing the fireball and now he's anti airing you. It feels so scary. So, as someone who uses projectiles, the main method, the main uh, takeaway from this whole video was to sometimes treat them as pokes. That doesn't mean you should never treat them as like a zoning tool. Yes, if you're this far against Kami, or okay, maybe not Kami, she's going to level three you. Against a lot of characters, you should just throw this until they get close to you. You can dungeon charge because now they're scared of fireballs. But when you get to this range, I, I want you guys to start thinking of fireballs as just in dulcim hands pretty much, right? His standing heavy punch. I want you to think of it very similarly. Well, yes, you can get drive impacted or jumped if you press it at a bad time. That doesn't mean you should never use it as just a very good poke that controls space and forces your opponent to do something. Dealing with a good fireball game is hard. It's supposed to be hard. It's what makes some fireball characters really hard to deal with um, when they're good, you know, like Ken, Luke, DJ, etc. Uh, but yeah, get used to walk block, walk parry, and you do take risks on offense and on defense when it comes to fireballs. I hope you learned something. Let me know if there's anything else you guys would like a overview of. Uh, if you learned anything or want to learn something in the future, I would appreciate a like, comment, or subscription. See you guys next time. Stay beautiful.